production pieces. And for the first time, we actually invested money in, in uh, publicity. We, uh, otherwise, we, we used all the pub free publicity to make our, our uh, mark on the, on the area. But uh, we actually put an ad in the paper, and we actually sold pieces to people who came who had seen that ad, which was quite wonderful to have success, financial success for once. So on. she'd been doing her production work for a while then, or had she just started that? I, I don't know uh, the details on her, on her work, mm -hmm. but all I know is Margaret never really wanted, never agreed to be involved in that work. Mm. She agreed to do the designs but she wanted to be a designer, and you have to put the time designing. It takes takes you hours to design things, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't you can't be uh, repairing things. You can't polish things if somebody doesn't do it well. So that was that would always would have to come up if they they hired a man who was a friend, but uh, he wasn't a great craftsman. Oh. I mean, he didn't love the work. I and mean, you have to love the work mm -hmm. to really do it right, I think. You have to have a passion. Maybe maybe as a trained dummy you can get it, but I don't know. I just think you have to have more than a normal feeling. But she she did not want to be involved in the everyday things. She didn't want to have to take care of the bills. She didn't want to take care of anything. She She just wanted to do the designing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just know that even though the, uh, the books talk about her as if she really wanted it, on a certain level, theoretical level, she wanted it, you know, because it would, could, it, they, she did have a feeling that she couldn't sell things to everybody, that, you know, that her prices were too high for her designs, mm -hmm. but you know, that, but you know, that, anyhow. But Gene wanted to do that, and he certainly had the skills, and, and he certainly mm -hmm. did you know, get the production together, but he didn't want to produce it either. So they hired this young man mm. who was pretty sloppy. Mm, okay. <laughs> so, you know, a thing would come back, and, and he's not there all the time, the, the man that they hired, and who's going to fix it? Not Gene, has to be Margaret. So she just hated it. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But anyhow, so during that time when we had the gallery, uh, Jean and Margaret came to Chicago and came in and introduced themselves, and we, you know, had a nice meeting. Mm -hmm. So that when I moved to San Francisco, I did know her, and she was one of two people that I knew okay. here <laughs> when I came. But I came and fell in love with the city, and was going to stay. So I called her and she said, would I like to come watch her work? And I said, I'd love to. So I came and watched her work. And she, at that time, stood, stood up and worked because she used a blowpipe and gas rather than what we have now, right? So she wanted to stand and keep her chest open so that she had good air to work these things. Mm. And so, you know, I watched her standing, and that's when I noticed she had the marks on her fingers that, you know, like <laughs> later called tattoos, jewelers tattoos. Uh, so anyhow, uh, I did watch her work, and it was wonderful. So you know, she, she moved from San Francisco. The year that I was gone in France, well, her husband, Jean, and another friend of mine refused to sign the loyalty oath. So they lost their jobs. Oh, the whole communism scare. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, and some of the people were picked up as scapegoats. And mm. my friend, uh, Biz Mezzi, a photographer, and Jean were two of the people that were picked up and made headlines. I wasn't here, so mm -hmm. I didn't see it, but mm -hmm. apparently it really scared Jean. I mean, he, he just had a job gotten a job teaching at Lick Wilmerding, which was a private school, and he was going to do the you know, whole workshop set up there, like 
uh, which would have been great, you know, in high school to have that. But the I lost the lost the job, and and uh, then they bought the place out in the country, mm -hmm. where he was planning to make a school, but. Margaret did not want to do a school. She did not want to be a teacher. She wanted to be a designer. Mm -hmm. So she, she would not, she would not put her time into his dream of the school, mm. and he couldn't do it by himself. Yeah, right. I guess there are other things, maybe money, etc. Right. Uh, were you very close to her, or are you just? Well, I was. Yeah, we were. We were. Uh, friends mm -hmm. I, mean, I visited her wherever she lived and and uh, my husband also and we go out and she had a I'm sure you've probably heard that she had a special table she had built yes. that had grooves and I was there one day with Imogen Cunningham you know mm -hmm. who she is a photographer very very well she was in her 90s already and very sassy and uh, <laughs> she said what she thought <laughs> So she said, Margaret, get me a dish I can't I can't eat out of this. <laughs> she wasn't very she didn't she didn't play around with, with pretty words. <laughs> she, she got what she wanted. So Margaret cleaned everything but you know, it was not you know uh, and and she put the dessert on a little plate rather right. than putting that on your on a plate you just use for fried potatoes or whatever. Yeah, because it was a big table that had the grooves in that you would eat out of the grooves, like they were plates. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so, oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> well, apparently in Switzerland, uh, in the mountains, they have wooden tables like that outside. But uh, so in a way, even though they thought it was fresh, it was something that actually okay. exists, you know. Uh, but, you know, it's not something... Uh, you don't see it here. Most people are accustomed to <laughs> She was game to try it. I mean, Margaret and Jean liked, liked to, uh, you know, get people's attitudes on new things. Right. You know, they were always trying something new. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I love what Margaret did. I just, the, what, that one piece, well, that's, you know, the largest photograph in most of everything you see with it. The stone just has one line that keeps mm -hmm. bending. Oh, that was so beautiful to see the first time. Oh, I mean, I said, Margaret, you have done the masterpiece with this. I just felt so thrilled to see it. You know, she just, she, and you know, she would get rings that people would, somebody would own a piece and then someone else would get it, right? And they'd have a smaller finger and she'd have to resize. Oh. So they, she'd get the piece back to resize. And one piece, she spent three days trying to find out how to resize that because she couldn't remember and she couldn't figure it out. It took her three days to re, you know, and that she didn't earn enough to, to sneeze sure. on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Was it because this, she didn't want to damage the stone or just the well, she engineering? Well, she couldn't, you know, the engineering that she used, she could not see where it was. Wow. Yeah, I mean, she did fantastic things with setting. That's what I, and what yes. her work was like. But what was she like as a person? Well, she was wonderful. Uh, I mean, very, very fair kind of. She really, I mean, as I said, when in ordinary circumstances, she would have, what if there's some sort of business happening, I could look at her, you know, and say, and she would, she would be responsive. You know, she'd know. You know, I'd know that her. She was knowing that, that it was difficult, but I was doing the best I could.